Hi, I'm Kevin. And I'm Amanda. And we are serving up all that jam. All that jam, quick hit. Yak attack origin story. We have Dave Dernusik from Yak Attack here with us today. How you doing, Dave? I'm good, Kevin. How are you? I'm fantastic, fantastic. Um, so I when I Google Yak Attack, I get like a tackle company or something too, or yes, some other yeah. thing. Well, unfortunately, not the uh, single most recognized brand. There's a there's like a kayak or kayak accessories kayak. company that that yeah. right, which <laughs> threw me. Then I went on um the, then I tried on uh YouTube. And I found you, you guys were right there with it, but I was like, this is weird. Is there a specific meaning or story behind the name? Um, not really. Um, the uh, founding member, uh, uh, the original bass player of the band, um, was in a lot of groups that featured hoofed mammals or ungulates. And so this was just a natural extension of that. And it kind of fits all of the, uh, you know, attributes that you really want for band name. It's easy to spell, easy to Google, um, two words, um, you know, so... Uh, there's unfortunately not too big of a <laughs> big backstory behind the name, but it does sound nice and we've gotten some positive feedback on it. So yeah, there you go. So, so can you give me the, your origin story there? Yeah. So, um, you know, I had played uh, guitar and keys in various projects and, you know, moved out to Portland in about uh, Portland, Oregon, about 2007, 2008. And uh, we got started <clears throat> doing a bunch of, you know, I've always wanted to do like a live looping project, but not have it sound like it was a live looping project. So there's a lot of folks who, you know, are just really experts at that format, but it kind of constrains you to where if you're a solo artist or you rely so heavily on the looping efforts, you know, the song construction gets constrained. Um, and it's just, it sounds like the songs were created with a looper, right? Not that there's anything wrong with that, but you know, it, it, it kind of very much cons- in my mind, constrains what the output can look like. So I wanted to, you know, use live looping, but in the construct of, you know, live electronica or EDM adjacent, um, since that that style of music lends itself so well to both integration of synthesized elements and live instruments, um, as well as just the overall song formats um, are, are pretty consistent with what you can achieve with a live looping plus live drum setup. So, um, you know, after screwing around in the basement for a couple of years, like everyone does, um, managed to get the original lineup of the band together and with live drums, live bass, and, uh, myself on the, like an Ableton live looping rig with audio from real synthesizers. Um, and that's how the, the band started. Um, and we, you know, played, did the, did the thing playing around town, you know, for, um, as many weekends as we could for the first few years and uh, got a little traction, was able to start regional touring, got on some, you know, festivals in the, on the West Coast uh, pretty early on and that helped expand our reach. And, um, you know, from then on, uh, you know, managed to release a few albums and uh, tour, you know, mostly regionally, but a few national tours and a few, you know, flights uh, out to, you know, East Coast for some bigger festivals and stuff like that. So, uh, it's been a been it's been a fun ride, um, and I'm happy to happy to keep it going. Your current lineup you got has been together for four years. You want to talk yes. a little bit about your bandmates? Yeah, so um, found these guys uh, Jacob Rubanowitz on the bass and Marshall Bjorling on the drums, and they both live in Southern Oregon. So I live in Portland. <clears throat> it's about a four and a half hour uh, drive away, so it's a little bit of distance. Uh, but you know, we have friends who, whose bands are all across the country and stuff like that. So. Um, it is what it is. The distance hasn't been too bad. And, you know, we get, we get together and, um, you know, I really had to uh, get them uh, through a, a quick boot camp for the first few shows in 2019. Um, but they've been with the band ever since. And we've, we've toured the country a couple times and uh, it's been uh, great having, great having them on board. So let's walk through from 2019, they joined the band 2020, everything shuts down. How did you guys work through COVID? Was that, good for the band did that give you a chance to not have the pressure of playing live i I would say that it was not good for anybody in that 
any plans that you had were completely thrown amok, right? We had just dropped. We were like literally going on 26 date tour, you know, all across the country. We had like eight shows with Spafford and then we were going to go all the way to the East coast and stuff like that. So, you know, and, and of course that happened to everybody's band. Right. So it's like, I'm not complaining about it because there are people who dealt with far worse in both music and life. Right. So obviously those plans, you know, whatever plans you had getting completely thrown to the wind sucks. Obviously all of the macro stuff, um, <clears throat> you know, just the, like all of the horrendous things that happened throughout COVID that, that all sucked. Um, you know, it was nice. There were things that were not terrible and there were things that were a little nice, right? Like, um, you know, the, the forced reset kind of, you know, getting to take stock, reprioritize what's important in life. Um, I think a lot of like the, you know, without getting into any kind of politics or anything, you know, like the social justice stuff that happened, like there was, there was an awakening and there was kind of a reset of the American psyche, I think. And I think there are good things that came out of that. Also some bad things that came out of that. For us, you know, I think uh, I've got a day job, so I was very grateful to have that and to not rely on music for income. And that I, my philosophy was kind of get a little bit out of the way and let all of our friends who are hustling for their rent, um, you know, with music, take that space and, you know, do the, you know, let them take the lead on doing like the online fundraisers and the streaming and stuff like that. So we didn't do, we didn't start doing streams until maybe like September or October, 2020, when there were promoters that kind of reached out to us that wanted to work with us for something. And we did a few, you know, streams to empty rooms in venues that, you know, we, we played many times. Um, and it was weird, but it was nice to kind of get out there and, and play every once in a while. But yeah, I would say we were less active um, than a lot of, you know, our peers. Um, and, and I don't mind, I don't mind that. Um, I was happy to give, you know, bands that needed the hustle, uh, the space. And I was also, I was also, you know, happy to have a little bit of time to kind of reset and think about the world and <laughs> um, all that stuff. But but man, it sure has been nice to to get back into it. Um, you know, even though a, a lot of things I think changed permanently um, throughout COVID, uh, can't. I, I think there was that beautiful period in like summer of twenty one where everyone thought it was over, and we went to we went to Peach Festival, and uh, we had some other kind of festivals, and you know everyone was like, "This is great," and then everything shut down again. Um, you know, in, in that fall, uh, but there was little periods of time, you know, like summer of twenty twenty one where it was just beautiful and like the crowds were huge and the bands were just, every, you know, all the bands were on fire. Everyone was just like, this is the most amazing thing in the world to be back playing live music. And then everything shut down again, but you know, it's kind of like now we're at least at some kind of equilibrium where we're, you know, back to quote unquote normal. And it, it, it's good to kind of reduce those, those huge uncertainties, right. That were, um, that I think have been there until just about last year. If you are enjoying All That Jam, please like and subscribe to our social media channels at All That Jam Pod on Twitter, Instagram, and Facebook, or visit our website, allthatjampod.com. Make sure to sign up for our email list and tune in every week for new episodes. Also, look for full interviews on our YouTube channel. And remember, stay beautiful, but don't stay underground too long.